Yanni Mouton is first and foremost an investor. At age 66, his legacy is a 61 billion rand market cap company founded from obscurity. Back in 1996, Mouton saw potential in a small human resource company called PAG, operating on the sidelines of the JSE. These days, it goes by the name of PSG, an institution in the South African investment community. I remember the guy, the source, I won't mention his name, it was a well-known stockbroker, said, if you've got any money, put it into this company now. This thing's going to go somewhere. And I just thought, no ways. And then they did these deals, um, one after the other, including selling the original PAG business for a lot of money, much more than it was its market cap was worth. The purchase of PAG was one of Mouton's first truly inspired investments and paved the way towards establishing him as a stalwart in his sector. He did this series of deals. I can't remember the second one. It might have been serve, serve hold. He cashed out that and then people said, oh well, lucky. He's been lucky. He did it again and again and again. And then people said, whoa, wait a minute. This guy's got a bit of a touch. He knows what to invest in. He takes chances. He backs himself and he's obviously very, very sharp. And then before you knew it, the 30 cents that, I think they paid 30 cents for PAG, if I remember correctly, that was 30 cents. They paid a 30 cents dividend not too many years afterwards, so people got their money back in dividends. And then this legend started building. He has a wonderful feeling for business. He often says that people shouldn't give him lots of spreadsheets, but rather just the financials of what has happened. He can read a balance sheet and income statement like very few people. And it's a gut feeling. You'll see something, if you try and hide something, you'll pick it up immediately. His gut feeling is very seldom wrong. One of PSG's and Mouton's most notable success stories is microfinancing group Capitec, founded on principles of alleviating poverty by providing loans to the previously unbanked. The company's growth over the past 10 years has outstripped the expectations of many possibly even moot on himself. People come up with these ideas and people might say, oh God, that's pretty hair brain, that's not going to work. And you, I remember when Capitec was in their annual report under a little heading called Keynes Rational or Rational. And people didn't know what it was. No, it was a low cost banking business. It was small and tiny. They got the banking license when they bought out the TBB shell. No one paid any attention to it. And they kept backing this thing. And slowly there was more noise about it, more noise. And then the next minute they launched Capitec, and I'll never forget when that thing launched as well, it was uh, the market pounded it and they backed it. And this thing just started picking up again. Suddenly people said, this thing's got traction, it's an amazing business. It's got a great model, there's a lot of skepticism still, it started getting eroded. So you've seen what's happened to Capitec, it's amazing. Another has been Cura Holdings, a private education business founded in 1998 with just 28 scholars. Uh, Yanni Maton approached us through one of PSG's affiliates, Paladin, and um, declared his interest to purchase 50% of our shares. Uh, the meeting was short. Uh, Yanni was very concise. He made the decision within one or two weeks and uh, invested 50 million rand to purchase 50% of Kira Holding shares. And uh, then we started to expand rapidly. Kuro went public on the JSC's Alternative Exchange Board in June 2011 with a market cap of 440 million rand. Two weeks ago, the group moved to the main board of the JSC, bolstered by a market cap value of 2 billion rand. The company would never have grown uh, to its capacity that we enjoy today if it wasn't for PSG and Yanni Mouton. So yes, first and foremost, Yanni Mouton is an investor but he's not cut from the same cloth as the average investor. And I tease him from time to time. If you really want to know what it was like working with Yanni. So I said, I'll one day put on his headstone. Here lies an unreasonable man. The reason why I'm saying that is to get something done. One has to be unreasonable. Yanni can't understand why something can't be done. He's not conventional in that way. And therefore we've achieved many things. He formulates very, very well indeed. And that makes business decisions quite, quite easily because he's got this ability to reduce complex business issues to simplicity in a clear-cut language. And then the board members can make very, very good business decisions. So I would guess um, Yanni's ability to choose a growing company in a growing business sector 
is of high quality. It seems to me he doesn't make a mistake. Mouton now serves as non-executive chairperson on the PSG board after his son Pete took over as CEO of the business in 2010. He continues to engage with shareholders, media and the business community with the same enthusiasm and passion he had 16 years ago. One has to know Yanni to, uh, to really appreciate it because Yanni is so passionate about business. He is so focused on what he does. It has been an absolute amazing uh, journey. Welcome to A View from the Top. With me is Yanni Mouton, Chairman of the PSG Group. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you, Bruno. Let's go back to August 1995. A very difficult day, perhaps, in your career. You were sacked. How did you feel? OK. Um I never expected to be sacked. So number one, it's an unbelievable shock. Uh, you can't describe it. One day you were still working. The next day you were out of a job. You're shocked, you're worried. And to a certain extent, you are ashamed. You know, I thought of keeping it a secret and, no, and telling nobody what was impossible because uh, Rumor just went like that through Joe Buck. <laughs> you had been running this company with Kitsoff and Senecal for some 13 years, so SMK. That's right. Yeah. They were friends of yours. Yes, uh, but keep in mind the two of them. We started the company, Johan Senecal, Yanni Kitsoff and myself. And Yanni was the first to leave us to go to Rand Merchant Bank because he was one of the founding members there. And then Johan Senegal retired towards 1990, and I was still there, but we were at that time 20, 20 partners. What had you done wrong? And that's interesting, you know. <laughs> I had to think about it, and maybe it's good advice for anybody losing his job to try to do an analysis about yourself. A SWOT analysis. A SWOT analysis now. <laughs> that is what it's called. And I only realized it too late. And then my wife said to me, Yanni, but you must have done something wrong. You're not so great as you think. Because if 19 other partners think hey, you have to be fired, <laughs> you can't be right. So what came about from the SWOT analysis? What were the problems with yourself? I think I was maybe too driven, not in a way nice to everybody around me. I've learned a tremendous lot how to treat people with respect. And uh, you can ask my new wife. Uh, it is difficult, <laughs> but I've learned the hard way near. Your people skills is important. You know, you're working with sensitive people, so I've learned a lot. Maybe I was too focused, driven, and not... The word is geduldig. I can't think of the English word now. Patient. Do you have a temper? Uh, I've never seen my temper, but apparently, yes. <laughs> it became public. You couldn't keep it a secret. Um, Yes, because sometimes I think people are unreasonable if they don't understand what I'm trying to say. Then they should be unreasonable because it's quite clear what I want and what I'm saying. But people tend to always argue with me. How do you feel about that description that you're an unreasonable man? Is that fitting? That's my friend Chris Otto. And I take a note about that. <laughs> I'll see him tomorrow. He's on holiday, but I call him back. I'm going to explain. All right, right time, right place. PAG. This was a yeah. little gold mine for you. For anybody who lost their job, one thing is you have time to read and read and think. So apart from analyzing yourself, develop a clear plan. What you want to do, and this is advice you can give to a friend that is in a similar position. 
read, think, and later on, write out a plan what you want to do. It's nothing. It's this, this is strategy. Yeah, it's actually what you want to do. Now, for me, I wrote it in 95 because I had lots of time. I was sitting at home. I know the financial services business and I know stockbroking. We've listed various companies, SMK, we listed National Pers, Naspers, Richmond, Medical and Nick companies like that, credit companies. So I was familiar with that and I thought I want to get control of a small financial services company and then I know exactly what I want and then PAG came along. It was a small listed financial services company and then I think what you also should do then, then you must have the guts to do it on section. You have to be unbelievable, take the risk and buy it. And what's interesting, it wasn't a company without these little problems, but it was an opportunity I was waiting for. We bought control of the company with a bit of funding help from Rand Merchant Bank. And uh, the market cap of the company was 7 million Rand. It's a small company. This is now the number of shares time market price gives you market cap. And then 18 months later, we sold it for 107 million rand. Made exactly 100 million profit, and I think that's luck. I need to jump in here with a sidebar story before we talk about the luck. Yeah. You say with a little help from Rand Merchant Bank, and that of course brings me to the myth, or the alleged myth of the Stellenbosch Mafia. Is there such a thing? Yes, you know, we Mafia members don't talk. <laughs> no, we don't talk. For sure there's a Mafia, but I don't know them. Yeah, as, as friends, you know, we are friends. We even compete with one another. Do you think, for instance, uh, they would share all their <laughs> transactions with you? But it's a small town and we are friends. So let's talk about your journey here. You, you say luck, and you mention that a lot in terms of how you describe the success that you've, you've had. I've learned that from Tej Fisher. He was a humble man, my friend, he passed away. Uh, he said, Yanni, don't confuse yourself. You are more lucky than a genius. You are more lucky than a genius? Yeah. And he said, Yanni, don't ever confuse you. So you're not so clever that you that you think you are. <laughs> you are lucky as well. On that note, have you made bad decisions? Yeah. Uh, keep in mind, for instance, we had a very nice company called Escher. It was a listed company. We merged Escher with M-Cube. And M-Cube was a disaster. It kept us I think busy for six years to clear, clear the mess. That was, what do you do when you make a mistake? You say six years, so you I don't immediately you to, cut your losses. You have to admit it, and you immediately have to take action to, as you say, cut your losses and go on with life.